gentlemen, welcome to season two of Later with Jason Sewell. Woo! You did it. We did it. We did it, guys. They're having us back for another season. It's so exciting to have you here on our first show, season two. Uh, we're thrilled about the guests we have with us today. Johan Acuna, who's the associate worship pastor at Cross Church and also a violinist for the Symphony of Northwest Arkansas is here. Yeah. Yeah. Antoinette Grajeda, Ozarks at Large producer, is joining us on the show. And a man who truly needs no introduction, so I'm not going to give him one. Uh, Case DeGario, Director of Culinary at Crystal Bridges, is joining us in the show. And, and, he's making food in studio today with us. Woo! So, woo! All right. We're excited about it, huh? Food. Food? So let's go check in with Case and see what he's got going on. Jason, yes. how are you this evening? <laughs> I'm great. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. I gotta tell you, I'm so excited. Last year I did make the first episode, and so I was a little uh, bummed out. You were on episode year, two last year. I was on year. episode two. You, but told, you, you said it was going to be one. You thought it was one. I we did. tricked you. I did this whole big thing. <laughs> yeah. I, and how exciting is it you guys have the white stripes here tonight? I think that's interesting <laughs> that you were able to I know. get them on such short notice. It's amazing. They were just in <laughs> town great, passing right? through. There they He's are. an old friend. There's Jack and Meg. So. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to make some food. Yeah. Um, what is it? <laughs> I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure that out. No, it's, um, you know, we at the museum do this sort of special style of food we call high south cuisine. So it's all about procuring ingredients and things like that from the Ozarks. And mm -hmm. so this is sort of the epitome of high south cuisine. So it's, you've probably had a crab cake before in your life, I would imagine. <laughs> yes, those Ozark crabs. Well, <laughs> I'm not talking about you personally. I'm talking about food. Okay, so okay. I will tell you that, uh, yeah, you probably had, I, I, one time we were in New York and you had 45 crab cakes yeah, at dinner, In one sitting, that's right, yeah. But this is actually sort of that same deal, but we're using smoked trout. So trout ah. that I actually caught from the White River, um, I'm claiming that I caught, and then uh, <laughs> smoked, and then we're going to make these little, little crab cakes with a, a puree and a pistachio cream. It's going to be delicious. You're going to be so happy to have it. I, we're so happy that you're here bringing us food today. It's my pleasure. One of the things that I really like is that you always procure the the, the fish. Last time you were on the show, you caught the Ozark, the rare Ozark sea bass. The sea bass. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I, I did. We uh, we took a fishing trip out into the middle of Beaver Lake, and we caught the sea bass. I don't, we don't know how it got there. Somebody released them, but uh, no, yeah. yeah. It is. And this trout, I said the White River, but this trout was actually caught um, in the little pond outside the castle in Wilson Park. So, <laughs> perfect. There's, there's Wilson so it's Park <laughs> Trout. <laughs> so it's really coy. It's a coy. It is very, it is. Uh, I'm trying to be coy. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, we are thrilled to have you here as well My as pleasure. all of our guests. And uh, stick around, folks. We'll be right back with more from later. <laughs> Woo! Hello there. I'm here to catch you up on the latest computer technology, to give you all the latest technical jargon so you can know the difference between your Twitter and your wiki. You know, technology talk is all around us. Just the other day, a waitress at the Waffle Hut burnt my pancakes, and she got so upset with herself, she said she's going to go totally off the grid. Dull. I know that uh, opening email and getting a virus is a lot worse than getting a hair in your biscuit but I do associate the two. Uh, and when you face virtual reality, you know, it's like, it's like the word modem. When the grass gets too high in my front yard and my backyard, I got up in modem. You know, a lot of people out there have come to me and asked me, uh, you know, what is the difference in an inbox and an Xbox? Or a laptop and a lap dance? Well, <laughs> I've had experience in both. Like, what do you do when a cyber bully gets up in your face tube? Well, there's a couple of different ways of handling it. What I like to do is I'll download his Moodle and defrag him in the interface. You won't hear much from him again. Let me reverberate. If you have a, an option of fence posting a blogger 
are tagging someone in their interface, you better check your cookies or you could end up downloading in your Levi's. Think about that one. Well, I'm gonna sign off now and I'm going to fence post a picture on MySpace for you. You can put it on your selfie and I'm gonna make like that boy George and I'm gonna tumbler for you. Thanks for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're joined in the studio now with Johan Acuna. Johan, you brought your violin. Yeah. Uh, what are we gonna be hearing from you? All right, so this, uh, this piece I'm gonna play, it's a gypsy piece. Um, so if you're like backpacking, in like Eastern Europe or something, right? In Ukraine, trying to hide from the troops or whatever. Um, <laughs> this might be a this, song. This might hear. be a song that you hear. Uh, it's called Chartus. Okay. I don't know what it means, but great. We can make up good. some amazing meaning for the word Chartus. Yeah, I think. I think so. Yeah. Um, Probably sounds like indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> it, you got a bad case of Chartus today. Yeah. I can't come into work. Guys. Bad trout. Or, bad. Yeah. The bad. Hey, bad so. Ozark crabs. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, yeah. so yeah, well, we're excited to hear from you, um, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Johan Acuna. Gentlemen, uh, thanks for coming back. Wow, uh, Johan Acuna, and you just played the most beautiful song. I made it up uh, as I went. It was you amazing. just improvised it's the whole thing. Inspired. It was That's awesome. why we yeah. had you on the show. We just thought that this yeah. guy, he's going to rip out something amazing. <laughs> yeah. It How long out. have you been playing uh, uh, the violin? Uh, I've been playing for, gosh, like 17 years now. Wow. Yeah, I started when I was in middle school, actually, which is late. Most violinists, they start when they're like four or five. Really? Yeah. 
you know, and it's that's why you know you, you see these guys do some amazing things. You're like, man, they've been playing since they were three. Right. Yeah. So I, I was like a late starter. I started when I was 11. So I was like in remedial classes. Short right? bus, pick me up. Yes. Was, yeah, it's bad. But you're totally accomplished now and doing a lot of great things, right? I'm trying to. Yeah. Trying to. Yeah. Um, you know, I studied violin performance in my undergrad. Mm -hmm. and then, Where was uh, that? Where did you go to undergrad? In Texas, uh, at Baylor University. Okay. Yeah. Um, they happened to lose. Yeah, I know. I know. Tournament. Right. Yeah, I know. But um, yeah, so I studied there, and then I went into ministry after that. Okay. But you know, still, you know, I, you know, since I studied classically, I still like to play with you know with symphonies in the area just to kind of keep my chops up and right. Help. You know, when did you move to the area? When did you move to Northwest Arkansas? I moved to to Northwest Arkansas about three and a half years ago. Okay. Like in 2011. Right. Late 2011. And did you start right away playing with uh, Sona? Did you seek out the symphony? No, I mean, uh, I actually. I didn't know about them until one of my coworkers, you know, who works in Fayetteville, they were like, hey, man, you need to come see this concert. They're playing, I think, like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony or something. Right. And um, so I wanted I to go see I just said right him. like I have any idea yeah, what was. Beethoven's Fifth You were there. I think is. I saw you there. Yeah, no, yeah. I was playing. I yeah, was conducting course. the thing. Yeah, so. you look familiar. Yeah. Side job. <laughs> but anyway, so I checked it out, and then uh, I emailed the conductor, and I was like, hey, I'd like to set up an audition. And so the next season, uh, when the auditions kind of started, yeah. Um, I went and played for them, and which was kind of you know it was nerve wracking because I hadn't done an audition in like four years, so I came in all rusty and yeah. So when you play when you play with your church work, are you playing the violin? Or are you playing a different? No, instrument? normally I play I play a keyboard. Okay, so, so you're a multi instrumentalist. Yeah, well what? it's all pre recorded, so it just looks like I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. Um, what else do you play? You play violin, keyboards, obviously. You're... Yeah, those are my main two. Okay. I mean, in school, I'll play like some viola, uh, acoustic guitar, very basic. I mean, nothing like these guys. Over right. Here, but, um, right. Just very, but mainly They're violin. so accomplished, guys. the band. Dude, here. these guys are great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I heard they're headed to Nashville. <laughs> yeah, they're going to record now. They're going to record. The yeah. drummer from Ultra Suede is amazing. Dude, he's, so. he's, my, he's like my hero. <laughs> <laughs> um,. So that's so, uh, but with Sona, you play your you play your violin, mm -hmm. obviously nerve wracking. Yeah. You went to the audition. What was that audition process like? It was actually really relaxed. Okay. So you know, is it just? I'm imagining you and a guy, and you're not in a white room somewhere. He's not really close to you, and he's completely just judging you with a clipboard. No, that's the cool thing. I mean, I guess sometimes it's like that. I mean, sometimes like in a big symphony, you show up to the performance hall, and you're the only thing on the hall. They have a music stand. This is right. huge hall, and you're like standing there, and then the the jurors, or you know, like whoever they are, right? They're in the audience, and they're all sitting together. There's like five of them, and then you have your excerpts that you have to play. And they don't say anything. Right. They're just like, you play, and then they're like, okay, thank you. And then you're like, what happened? Did I make it? Did it give, me a, give me something yeah. here, right? But this, I mean, this process was really chill. I mean, first, you know, Paul Haas, the artistic director, he talked to me a little bit, got to know me. And then I played um, part of a violin concerto and then some orchestral excerpts. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was it. And then we just talked for a little bit. And he's like, yeah, you know, I, I liked how you play. You know, I'll, I'll see what openings we have, and so the next, I think the next concert, I ended up playing in the in the first violin section with, with Sona, so. That's amazing. I've playing with them ever since. So a couple of questions, uh, just to, to finish up with you here. Um, do you have a favorite, like, um, composer or a favorite piece of music that you enjoy? Yeah, I have two favorites. Um, my first one's Beethoven. I just like, you know, his music, the way he wrote. Just, I think, mm -hmm. the fact that. I think I, like, he lives over on, I think like, he, like uh, I don't really see him on Street. Dixon. Yeah, something. Dixon. Yeah. He's always walking up and down. <laughs> he's always mad and yeah. drinking and stuff. Today <laughs> I was I, I I thought of this too late, but I really wanted to come in dressed up as Johann Sebastian Bach. Well, see, it's funny you mentioned him because that's my my second one. Oh right. I was actually oddly enough, I was named after Johann Sebastian Bach. Yeah. Which I think I'm probably the only Mexican who was yeah, ever named after Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my dad just decided, you know, because the the I guess. You know, Johan is German for like mm -hmm. John, so in Spanish it would be Juan. Right. So my mom was like, Are you sure you just want to call him Juan? And, <laughs> and he's, he's like, like, Nah, Johan. She's like, <laughs> I've got this. Listen, yeah. I've thought about it. So, this I mean, that's what happened. Johann. And so, ironically, I ended up playing music and, and all that, so it worked out. But those are my favorites Beethoven and Bach. Why do you like those the most? Is there something that's challenging about them? Are they just, you like them yeah. the way they sound? Um, Bach was, I mean, just his writing was very, very intelligent. Um, his workload, was crazy. I mean, he, you know, I, not to try to draw any similarities, but Bach was a church musician. Mm. And so part of his, you know, job, his livelihood was he was like the worship leader, as we would call it now, uh, in two churches in Leipzig in Germany. So every week he would write new music 
you know, in addition to all the classical stuff you did. So mm -hmm. I, mean, I just I just like that because that's kind of where I am in my life. I mean, obviously not as notable. But you're like our <laughs> you're like our present day Northwest Arkansas Johann Sebastian Bach. I just need a are. white wig. You know, yeah. They, you know. If you walk around with that, they, everyone would know who you are and get sure. arrested. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Bach of Fayetteville. I'll be Bach. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was waiting for someone to say it. No. Um, but Beethoven, I mean, I just like his music because he was a key figure in music. Right. Um, he kind of bridged the classical and the romantic period. And he did most of it while he was deaf. Yeah. He went deaf in 1803, died, I think, in the late 20s or 30s. And so, like, that last third of his life, he wrote all his music, performed deaf. Yeah. So it just... <laughs> I've actually thought about that as a publicity stunt. Just kind of, like... Or like going blind in one eye just to try to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but draw them my in. wife won't let me. She's no. like, I'm, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> she's not dedicated to that. She's not. Yeah. She's not. There's, there's, there's commitment issues there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Um, so, um, so you're playing with Sona, and, and what's coming up? Like, do you have a concert in the future that yeah. we should let people, inform people this about? This is going to be a really cool concert. Normally Bach the last the one. Yes. Bach <laughs> to the future. Well, it's. That's actually, why you get paid the big yeah, bucks over there. Yeah, it's amazing. It's actually going to be movie music, so kind of. Um, it's called A Night in the Movies, Okay. and it's going to be 100 years of film music, so from silent movies all the way to like what you see now. And I think that's a really cool thing to actually see the music uh, live. Yeah. Because you watch a movie, and I don't know if you've ever done this, but like, especially like horror movies, mm -hmm. if you watch it on mute, it's so like, it's lame. Right. You know, the music adds so much <laughs> to it, like the suspense or the action sequences. I'm sure Beethoven was thinking that, too. He totally was. He was watching everything on mute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just, the battery was broken, so he yeah. just it stayed that yeah. way. No, but um, it, it really is a cool thing to see it. So um, I think if you look at, you know, Sona online, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I can't remember the exact date of the concert, sure. but it'll be really, really cool. Sure. Yeah. That's awesome. That sounds like a really fun concert. And thanks for yeah. coming in. Thanks for yeah, being bet. here. And the song you played was beautiful. Ladies thanks. and gentlemen, Johan Acuna. <laughs> You, I don't, I don't know how you guys got the black keys here, but they are fantastic. <laughs> they are incredible. They were just walking by, you know. Um, I'm, there's yeah. a, I'm sure there's a festival somewhere, and they yeah. were just like, we're gonna pop in. Yeah, <laughs> old well, friends. Good to have them here. Yeah. You did say black geese, right? Yeah. The black geese. Yeah, the black cheese. <laughs> Okay, sorry. So what's yes. uh, going on? All right, so the trout. This is the thing about this. It's a very simple recipe. We're talking about some breadcrumbs, some onions. Uh, some peppers, throw the smoked trout in there as well. You, you wanna... say simple, and then you said all of that stuff, and my brain went complex. <laughs> well, it's it's not really. I mean, it's obviously one of those canvas dishes. I, I use that term where you can add anything to it that you want. But the base is you want to basically be able to create a patty. And so you need to have a binder. And so the binder is really what I use is Dijon mustard. Mm -hmm. You can use egg. But that's really it. So it's not, you know, you can follow a very specific recipe. I can give you a recipe. But you can take these ingredients that I'm talking about, breadcrumbs, trout, onions, peppers, Dijon mustard, a little salt and pepper, and you're there. Just play yeah. with it until you come up with the patty, which is the size of about one of these guys. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to yeah. add a little olive oil. You can certainly use butter if you want. A little more panko breadcrumb inside or on the outside. And then we're just going to put them right in here. And we're going to get a little sizzle. You hear that sizzle? You hear that sizzle? Oh, I hear it. Sizzle. <laughs> it's real sizzly. It's, re it's real sizzly up in here. <laughs> it is. So that's really it. So we're just going to let these guys cook. And uh, you want them to you know, get nice and golden brown on the outside. Right. And then we're going to just kind of towel them off. They're going to be a little sweaty, but we want to towel them off. Mm -hmm. and, okay. uh, and then we're going to add them with a couple of a little sauces. Sweaty fish cakes. You can sweaty fish cakes. Yeah, that's classic. Well, love it's, food, I so. love sweaty fish cakes. I know. The Black Keys, man. The they, Black Keys, they're quick. That, they're quick. That's and next you song. never know. And they're all about the Ozark crafts, too, I understand. So. I heard, I've heard. They're generous with their... So these guys are going to cook, I'm going to say, about four, four to five minutes on each side. That's and then quick. we're going to towel them off. We're going to add them to the plate. I think that's how we'll probably come back in a few minutes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you kind of how, how to do this little thing at the end to make it look really pretty wow, and cool. Wow, I'm excited. Eating it's crab good. cakes in studio, everybody. Um, I, woo! Yeah. yeah. Whoa. 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 Whoa
Stick around. Awesome. We'll be right back. Be right back. Hello there. You know, uh, technology is moving faster than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. And to stay on top of it is really harder than trying to nail jello to a tree. I know for a fact that some of you are more confused than a fart in a fan factory. But if you stay with it, you can learn it. If you act like a wheelbarrow, though, you'll be pushed around. So let's get busy. Let's get our head out of the cloud, get on the line, and do some fishing and put some spam in the net. Next, I want to talk about what do you do if someone steals the motor out of your tractor? Well, then you've got to search for an engine. It's called search engine. If you don't do that, you may have to stick out your thumb drive to get into town. You know, I wish I had the money that Bill Jobs has. Uh, he got rich with his little apple stand. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think I could uh, save a nickel by jumping over a dime right now. But the technology, you can get online, get a job for yourself, and people get on your, uh, get on your, uh, your space, and then the money comes in. That's what I've heard. Uh, now, uh, my cousin Cooter came to me, and he was trying to make some money that way online, and he said he's done gone viral on Uspace. Well, come to find out, he had just left his finger too long on the effing numb locks. He was more confused than I'd ever seen him. He didn't know whether to uh, check his butt or scratch his watch. Well, I'm signing off now, and don't uh, don't get intimidated by all the abbreviations you see out there, the 3Gs, the 4Ks, the DDLs, the PP on me. Just remember, you can learn it if you believe it. See you on Uspace. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're joined in the studio now with Antoinette Grajeda, Ozarks at Large producer. Yes. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Oh my gosh. So I've wanted to get you on the show for a long time because I want to get to know the lady behind the microphone, the lady behind the voice Okay. on Ozarks at Large. So here you are. Here I am. Um, so you produce this show. I do. Uh, hugely popular show highlighting, <laughs> I mean, I think, it's, in my world, it's like one of the top three. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You've been on it. I know. Th those episodes are definitely number one. Number one. Of the week. <laughs> number one of the week for you. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I just, I'm curious, uh, when you produce this show, when you're talking to people, are there ever any segments that you do that don't actually get aired? It's very rare right? to go out and do an interview and then not end up on the air in some form. Sometimes um, we'll go out and it's just not great, so it might be way shorter than we considered. Right. Um, I do remember one time I had something that I told you about this earlier that did not make the air. Um, I had a gentleman call and uh, tell us about a new underground tour in Eureka Springs and he was talking about the tunnels and it sounded really, really cool. So I'm like, all right, I'll come and let's do it. Okay. So he's like, well, I'm gonna take you on the tour. So we start above ground. Okay and wander through like Basin Park and then come across the street and, and we go into this um, kind of the basement of this one building. And that was as far underground as we got. Um, he <laughs> pointed to this hole in the wall to where you know the, the tunnels were, were apparently were. behind the wall. Um, but it wasn't safe to go back there. So as far as you got underground was kind of into kind a basement. Kind of into a basement. So I, it wasn't exactly okay. as well represented as he had said. So there wasn't quite the story that we had anticipated, right. so it just didn't work out. That reminds me of a time, just <laughs> quick uh, side note. Yes. I was in Scotland, we were in Edinburgh, and we mm -hmm. decided to go on this underground tour. We, it was with this group of people. And, uh, it was, was it a, underground? It was a similar thing. We started out actually underground, okay. but we traveled up, and they kept saying, you know, that the city had been built up so high that where we were was underground hundreds of years ago. That sounds so it was right. So I was like, this is a cop out, right? This is a, trying to get out of this thing. So anyway, we got to the very end of it. And my friend, who was Scottish, right? He was there with us. The guy asked, is there, any, is there anything you guys would like to see again? <laughs> Silence. And then my buddy goes, my money. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't lose any money on this. I mean, gas, I suppose, for yep. the trip over, but um, 
an interesting tour, lots of history, just sure. maybe misnamed. Sure, yeah, that not really an underground right. tour. Right, yeah, no. What about one of your like favorite segments that you've done, interviews, show, parts of a show? Um, uh, one of the favorites in recent memory probably had to do with um, meeting the man who takes care of Tusk, the um, mascot for ah, the Razorbacks. Right, yeah. A very, very large pig, like mm -hmm. huge. I'm pretty sure he's taller than me. <laughs> Um, it's one of those things and that... And you're six foot four, And I'm so. six foot four, so I mean, that's amazing. That's I'm a huge obviously pig. very tall, yeah. huge pig. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things in my job, I have the ability to kind of pick up the phone and if I have a question and people are more likely to answer you instead right. of being like, okay, weirdo. So I had this question where, you know, where does the pig stay the rest of the time when he's not at the game and not being petted and this sort of thing. And I assumed it was on a farm here somewhere new. No. It's like two and a half, three hours south near Dardanelle, like off the beaten path. This guy has um, this huge farm. He used to be a pig farmer, so right. he knows how to take care of them. Um, but Tusk has his own like huge barn arena area all to himself, but they treat him like he's their pet. Royalty. He's like, yes, oh, he's man. like their, you know, their puppy. Like he rolls over and they'll like pet his stomach <laughs> and like feed him little snacks and like his daughter, he'll, uh, he'll give the daughter kisses. Like it's like, yeah, he's like a trained. Are they sloppy a bit of, just, They're very sloppy. Yeah. I, I I opted not to. I, <laughs> you did not. I had want a respectable kiss. distance. Right. Uh -huh. You guys just shook hands we, and parted ways. We nicely. did. We did do that. Yeah. <laughs> Is there are there any other pigs there that are like named not quite Tusk? <laughs> <laughs> um, his his uncle lives there as well. Okay. So Tusk three, Tusk four. I'm not sure what number we're right? on. Yeah. Four. Um, I think. He's, I think. And so he's he's in an opposite stall, and he he's a lot larger actually, and he just kind of lays there. Now, so since you interviewed these folks, have they been the Providers of Tusk one, two, three. Like, is it all come from the same farm? Um, I think they've been at least for the last three because okay. they've got the two there that are there right now. But there was also a little um, gravesite for the oh. one that had passed away before. Right. Yes, and and the owner was was quite emotional because he was attached to this of animal. Course, it's they like act his like pet. Pets, yeah. Well, they have a. Um, the trailer is, you know, special made and, and they go with him, but the family travels with him and they'll like sleep on top of the trailer at night. So he's never by himself. So, I mean, they are attached to wow. this animal. Yeah, they that's take really good care really of him. Sweet. No, it's incredibly sweet. So I feel like the university made, you know, a good choice with who's right. taking care of our mascot. I wonder what the interview process for like that was like. Was it like Johan's interview uh, and you're like the only person on stage and people are asking questions about, uh, I just wonder, you know, how do they get to be decided to be the... Uh, the Tusk providers for the University of Arkansas. Right. He, I asked him, and, and he, you know, it's just they decided they wanted to have, when they decided they wanted to have a real pig as a mascot, you know, just somebody knew somebody who knew somebody said, oh, hey, this guy yeah. knows how to take care of pigs. He could probably do it. So awesome. it was, yeah, simple as that. So when you're you're getting ready to do a show, and obviously, um, you know, you're on the air a lot, do you have any, any tongue twisters? Do you do anything <laughs> to get that, ah, you know? No, actually, no. I, I, maybe I should. Maybe that's poor form. Um, oh, I, I, form. <laughs> I uh, just sort of turn the microphone on and, and read You're my scripts. You're such a professional that you don't need any prep time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that it's I'm a professional. Um, I think that it's we're not live, right. and you can mess so you up. Can, as, you can, can edit. Edit it all out. Absolutely. Yeah. Now <laughs> we are live occasionally um, during our fundraiser. Uh, we are live, and that does take a little more brain power, you have to consider what you're going to say, mm -hmm. and if you mess up, you know, be thoughtful and mindful about how you express your frustration yep. <laughs> with messing up. Yep. <laughs> Shoot. Thomas, you're exactly. a performer. Any, uh, any, any tongue twisters that you, uh, that are your favorites? I say rubber baby buggy bumpers, <laughs> just because I, I'm pretty good at it. And that is pretty good. I'm impressed. Rubber Do baby buggy bumpers, rubber times. baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers. Oh my. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's yeah. good. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Case, anything you got to? Yes, um, I'm a big fan of Unique New York, uh, uh, but I only say it correctly once, and then subsequently it's, I mispronounce You, you mess it up words. every yeah. time. Unique New York. These, yeah. are some, uh, these are some tips. These are some the tips. I, I appreciate right. it. I will work on that. That's how you get to where we are today. Okay. <laughs> I have somewhere to aim for now. That's thank right. you, guys. I was aimless. Aim very low. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking forward to? What's coming up uh, in your season Obviously, oh. it's it's springtime. Things it are blooming. Time. It's beautiful. It's becoming more beautiful outside. So, at, so. in the season at the at the station, or yeah. well, um, at the station. At the station. Well, uh, in March. Or in your personal life. In my if personal you just life. Want to share <laughs> anything. Well, let's start with the station. Okay. Yeah. Um, in March, uh, Kyle Kellams, my news director, celebrated his 25th anniversary of hosting our show. 
huge. So that was a big milestone. Um, this whole year, the station is celebrating 30 years as an NPR affiliate. Um, it existed before then as kind of a student-run station, but it's been with NPR uh, for 30 years now, so that's a big thing. Our spring on-air fundraiser <laughs> is coming up in April. Yep. Uh, starts the 10th, I believe, and will go for about a week. And um, so those are some big things we have on the horizon. And um, there'll be events throughout the year that you know we normally have our, our jazz series we have in the summer. Um, the Roots Festival, uh, we'll have a live show for that at the Fable Public Library with some of the um, yeah. guests. That's always fun. We enjoy that bit of outreach. And yeah. uh, not sure who we're going to have on yet, but we're excited. Well, that's awesome. And also exciting news. We might be uh, uh, partners in that with you because we talked to the Roots Fest and they're mm -hmm. going to bring us on as well. So I'm going to be having some interviews, some live interviews with some of the musicians, Excellent. which is really exciting on this show. So you're going to want to stick around for that and tune in to our subsequent episodes uh, for that happening. Absolutely. Antoinette, thanks so much for being here. It's always great to hear <laughs> your voice and to see you in person well, is even thank better. You. So thanks Appreciate so much for it. being here. Antoinette, Rajeda, everybody. Till my engine up and down Welcome back everybody uh, Case, you've been over Jason. here slaving over uh, these trout cakes prepared in a crab cake style It's a crab cake style, it's, it's really a, it's a trout in crab clothing <laughs> I've seen I thought that guys. that would be funnier than it actually was, so I apologize. <laughs> I was trying I to help you out to think. I was, my brain I was spinning around I was like, like what please, can I make out of that? Please giggle, Jason Sewell. <laughs> um, Self-deprecation is always funnier. It is. Yeah. It is. So are Ozark crabs. But um, so this last, this is basically. There it is. That one got a laugh. Well, we're going to keep, we were we're gonna keep going back to that all night long, <laughs> <laughs> even after the show's over. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so this is really it. So just a little pistachio cream, some ginger puree. I added some edible flowers from your gar your garden because yeah. I know you've had some. I, I eat flowers all the you time. You eat them all the time. Edible and non-edible. And non-edible. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and that's really it. So, and just throw some onions on there. Very, very simple, fun. And I'm telling you, if anybody wants the recipe, you can call me. But this is a great way to create your own recipe from a non-recipe. <laughs> they can just call you. Just call me. numbers out there. Call me. Somebody who knows somebody That's will right. have a case to get those Wait, you don't numbers. have Case's number? Oh, I have it. He has it. Oh, okay. I'm on speed dial. Yeah, he's he's oh, number okay. one on my favorite. Four, seven, nine. We, I mean, everybody I know has Case's number. Five, yes. five, five, five. All of you, we will be FaceTiming at some point this afternoon. So, <laughs> yeah. um, But that's really it, man. It's just, you know, it's high South cuisine. That's beautiful. That's what it is. Um, so I think that in a moment... If you've got enough of these, and it looks like you do, I think I'm good. We're all going to get everybody to, up here to try these crab cakes. Yeah. Crab I don't cakes, have trout cakes in crab clothes. <laughs> in whatever crab. you said. That's right. I don't have enough for all 350 of the studio audience, but I do have enough for everybody that was in. <laughs> everybody out there just got sad. I'm sorry, sorry everyone. everybody. Yeah. Oh, she's giving me the stink eye. Come and get don't. it anyway. What's he gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you his phone number if you need it. There so you don't go. worry. All right, everybody, stick around. We're gonna try these crab cakes. The crab cakes, uh, trout cakes, trout and crab cakes. Clothes. Stop calling them crab ah, cakes. Right when we get back, stick around, everybody. Did my best to get over that evergreen mountainside. Another night, another song, another drink, another town. Looking up where the night on falling down. Dead speed ahead, a perfect song in tow. Like an aircraft flame, just to try to light a room low. Well, I feel like I'm close, hitting mine, putting polish on a rock, trying to make it shine. So I hope that burning bright ain't burning out. Hope that burning bright ain't burning, burning out. I 
Working hard, turning lines into rhymes of red. Red wine, jealous hearts, and callous fingertips. Hope floats on a river of almost chance. It's a two step of songs, working lives, cans, and cans. Well, I feel like I'm close, getting mine, putting polish on a rock. So I hope that burning bright ain't burning now, yeah, I hope that burning bright ain't burning, burning out. I don't want to burn out. Turn it up, turn it off, and turn it down. Look up, life's gone when you turn around. How long can I shine without burning? I don't want to burn out Well, I feel like I'm close Getting mine, putting polish on a rock Trying to make it shine Think that I have it all figured out So I hope that burning bright ain't burning now Hope that burning bright ain't burning Well, well I feel like I'm close Getting mine, putting polish on a rock Trying to make it shine So I hope that burning bright ain't burning now. Hope that burning bright ain't burning, burning out. I don't want to burn out. I don't want to burn out. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, John Dooley. <laughs> Staring at this wall. In three days, I hadn't moved at all. Was that our last kiss? And they say that ignorance is bliss. And did you have the key to unlock what's inside of me? Feelings with no sound But all I had to do was turn around Finding you, it was finding me Now I'm letting go, please let me go Mind lose and in my hand, I'm only losing ground, but you'll still know where to be found, finding you, it was finding me, now I'm letting go, please let me
Awesome. Thanks for being in the studio. So how long have you been playing music, man? I mean, I've been playing since I was uh, 15 years old. I'm 32 now, so t 17 years, if you do the math right, if I do the math right. So. And have you been, uh, when did you start traveling around? Because you've got some gigs coming up, you're doing some things. Like, when did that, when did it start to become such a big part of your life? Well, me and my wife moved up to uh, Northwest Arkansas about three years ago, and I thought I'd do it as a little side project, and it just exploded, and uh, I get play three, four times uh, a year, yeah. I mean a week, since a year, three or four times a week now, and so. Um, and you're traveling all over, it's northwest Arkansas, but also you've gone up into Missouri, right? You're traveling around oh, yeah, a little yeah. bit? Yeah, I played uh, Neosho and, and Joplin, and uh, next week on spring break we're going to, me and Mike are going to uh, Hot Springs and play some uh, play some tunes down there, so it's going to be real fun. Great. So how can people find out more about your, uh, your, uh, your artists living here in northwest Arkansas? Can people check you out online? Oh yeah, johndooley.com, J-O-N-D-O-O-L-Y.com, has all my stuff, songs, bio uh where i'm playing next for the next couple months and everything cool yeah, i feel weird saying i have a website now it's, it's how weird <laughs> no it man that's you're making it the big time you're making it a part of your life <laughs> yes. we're so glad you came on those two songs were great original songs written by you I me assume. first one's written by me and barrett baber we got together and, and wrote a cool country nice poppy song because most of my stuff is real serious so right we got together and wrote that it's really really fun nice with him well, so great to have you guys in the studio. Mike, thanks for joining us. John, pleasure to have you. Stick around, everybody, for more with Later. Thank you for tuning in for episode one of season two of Later with Jason Sewell. I want to thank my guest Antoinette Grajeda was here. Case DeGaria was here. Yes. Uh, my friend Thomas Hunter, always a pleasure to have you here, friend. John Dooley, Johan yes. Acuna. Um, we got Jason Redcliffe, Charlie Platt back here. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Let's try this That's trout. Nice. Woo! Oh. Hey, <laughs> You're doing it on purpose Sing like you're singing on key Talk to the girl that intimidates you Pretend that you're brilliant